Hi there, I'm Kathy McGivern and welcome back to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. So today we're going to be talking, well in this episode, we're going to be talking about some winter art project or lesson ideas. So make sure that you follow this channel and uh, let's get into it. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Now, before we begin, make sure that you sign up right now for my free Making Art with Kids Challenge where I challenge you to make art with kids. And I am taking all kinds of pressure off because I am offering a free art lesson that will teach line art and felt marker painting. So there is no excuse for not making this happen. Dude, you're gonna love it because it is gonna come with like the lesson plan, handout, literally everything you need to teach this gecko line art project. Best of all, you will walk away confident and your students are going to love it. So check it out by going to www.arttasticcollective.com forward slash challenge right now and sign up for this free challenge. You can find this link in my blog, my blog, <laughs> my blog show notes um, for this podcast episode. Or if you look at the description of your of this podcast um, episode on your podcast player, you will find the link there. So check it out and sign up for the free challenge. All right, so let's dive into five winter art project or lesson ideas that you can you can simply and easily do in your classroom that use choice or flexible art mediums perfect for choice-based art education and learning. Okay, so remember this year in this season, it's the theme, remember, is flexible and choice. For two reasons, really. One, um, teachers are exhausted and I 100% recognize that. This year is really pushing everybody to their limits depending on where you're at. I mean, we all take in things differently. And so I recognize that as all, I recognize that also. Um, second, I think that this is a good opportunity to allow um, a bit of a change or revolution in our education. I know I've been hearing things about tab our education. Um, I'm in Canada, so things are different here, but I'm hearing about this tab thing. It seems to me like it is a more choice-based art approach where it's kind of like when you're in university. Um, I could be totally wrong, so please email me if I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. But anyways, what I'm talking about is just choice-based art education where we're kind of letting kids have the um, control of their learning and direction of what they're exploring. And we are kind of like the facilitators or guides through this journey, kind of like studio techs in university where there's a studio tech. Um, I went to art, art university uh, called Emily Carr, or Emily Carr University in um, Vancouver there on Granville Island, although it has moved since. I did go to school a very long time ago there. Anyway, off topic. Oh yeah, so <laughs> I get distracted really easily, you might notice. Anyway, so choice-based art, so it's kind of like yeah, a studio technician where you're an artist, you're exploring in a studio, um, you have your professors there, like when I was at Emily Carr, our professors were there to like guide us and bounce ideas off of, bounce ideas with us and like review our sketches and like visit our studio spaces. And they would kind of like talk with us about like where we're going during the process and creation of the artwork. They would kind of give us suggestions and ideas. Studio techs were there to help us with like technical medium stuff so like I did sculpture and clay so I had studio tech support me with the actual medium and that would be kind of in my idea of choice-based art education that would be what I would think the teacher is 
they come in, they do kind of like a demonstration of like the medium. So if you're giving kids a choice of picking from like soft pastel, oil pastel, watercolor paint, you could do a demonstration of like those mediums on like some construction paper or whatever paper they're going to be using. And then the kids can... Um, you can let them know the theme, obviously. We'll be all, like all artists and they're working around this sort of theme or subject. But then they are doing the visualization part of it. So you're stepping back from basically designing the entire art project. Um, it's just a different approach, right? So I have a bunch of easy to do and prep ideas that can use choice art mediums and that can allow the students to really immerse themselves in some wintry vibes. Kids are tired also, so like I'm really trying to think about how to make it less stressful, more exploratory, and also more engaging, but in an easy way because I also know that teachers are exhausted. So like uh, this year, all my art ideas are really focusing on making an impact with not a lot of like prep work and crazy art mediums like easy to grab things like i'm really trying to make it so it's fun vibrant but like we can handle it given the stresses of the year like right now at the time of recording this so i'm in british columbia it is november and this week on top of the pandemic and we are in like full masks, mandates, and all these crazy mandates. Okay, we had a natural disaster here because it's winter. <laughs> uh, and basically right now, all the rail lines, all the highways, everything are completely washed out. And right now, as I'm recording this, there are helicopters going over, like search and rescue helicopters, military helicopters, and helicopters delivering supplies to my neighboring communities because they're underwater. So, and it's just surreal because I'm sitting here doing this and people are evacuated. It's just, I don't even know why I'm talking about that. Anyway, what, oh yeah, what I'm saying is is that we all have some different things going on. <laughs> uh, so we're just trying to like get through everything. So I'm making it easy. I just wanna be there for you guys. For real and i get it that everything is hard right now right now okay okay let's move on it's been a it's been a long week for me okay so here we go uh, uh i have a bunch of yeah easy to do lessons so here we go we're gonna get into these winter ready-made oh yeah by the way i'm completely fine where i am a hundred percent good so don't I'm just worried about everybody else and the farmers that are having some dire s situations. Okay, let's get into these winter ready-made simple and engaging art lesson ideas for your amazing classroom. Okay, so bef um, the first idea is that we are going to be, or you can explore creating a winter landscape art project and exploration. So this idea can be done with like any age. I always think that anytime we have an opportunity for kids to immerse themselves in an observational experience and we have the means to, then we should definitely allow it. In this art lesson idea, I think that we need to let students experience what a winter landscape looks like. I think that you can for sure do this in a few ways. So first, you can take your students outside on an observational walk during winter where you live. So like I, like I said, I live in Canada, so I often take it for granted that we have four very distinct seasons here. Truth be told, where I am is just a little north of Washington State, so you can imagine I just mainly get rain for 10 months of the year. It's a rainforest, just not the tropical kind. It's the cold kind. That being said, I think there is a lot for kids to learn about winter and how it presents in their own environment and country or area. So for this lesson idea, you could take your students out on a walk during winter if you have it, uh, no matter what winter looks like where you live. 
If you cannot go on a walk around your neighborhood, go around your schoolyard. If that is not an option, you can always like put on a YouTube video of like what winter looks like in other places and like if you don't like the audio, just hit mute and then like put on a, like a Spotify playlist or Apple Music playlist of like winter jazz or whatever. Um, anyway, so you can put that on um, unless you find like a cool documentary or whatever and uh, play a video of winter, what it looks like in other places or a video of the Arctic region of the world to give them more of like an icy vibe. And if you don't like that, I know Bob Ross has painted a lot of winter landscapes, which you could play on Netflix and I am sure the kids will appreciate it. First, they'll, I, <laughs> I always love putting on Bob Ross for them. If they have never seen Bob Ross, if they're like in grade three, four, they're like, what's this guy? This is an old video. And then they're just like mesmerized by the experience. As you know, we all are. We just start watching it and then like, it's just like he sucks you in, man. He sucks you in. He's lovely. Anyway, distracted again. So basically, kids will appreciate it. They'll be engaged. Basically, what I'm saying is let them immerse in the essence of a beautiful winter day, whatever that might mean for you. Okay, next step for that is to do an immersive brainstorm. Okay, so this is where we're like going to... Um, do some engagement strategies and I'm totally bringing in total participation techniques. If you've ever read that educational book, I am going back to that because we have to bring out all the stops right now. Plus, I really like that book because like it's always like super easy. Like it's easy to do. It doesn't require prep. Like you can just like make it up on the spot. Kind of. Like as long as you know that you're doing it. But it's not like hard prep. So immersive brainstorm, after you walk or you do your video, play your video, take your classroom projector and find like a YouTube video of like snow falling and then like just put that at the back. It could even be cartoon snow. It doesn't even have to be real snow, like a, a video of snow. Um, and then just like put that at the back of the room and like project it not onto like your screen, but like into the classroom. So like you're trying to displace the video across your whole classroom. So like if you put it in the back corner and then project it towards the opposite corner, like it should fill up the space, right? Um, even if it's like weird and crazy looking, like the kids are gonna like just die for that, for real. They're gonna be like, what? Cause you just like, it's, it's unusual, it's unexpected. So what you're gonna do is like project it into your classroom instead of on your screen, but like on the classroom itself, kind of like those like Van Gogh museum immersive experiences that I see a lot of people going to. It's like that, but in your classroom. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Okay, so let them like walk around in the snow. And when I say snow, I mean like the quotation mark snow. <laughs> Because it's just projections without talking. I know they're going to be like super, like super excited for like a second. So like let them have their giggles and then just slowly start counting down like 20. I would start at 20 if they're young. Because <laughs> you know they're going to freak. If they're like a little bit older, start from 10. Okay, 10. We're going to be quiet in 9. Deep breaths in 8. Our hands are moving down by your side in seven and to our back in six. Deep breath in, five, and breathe out slowly, four, that kind of thing. Bring them down slowly after they get their little bubbles and giggles out. And then <laughs> let them walk around in the snow without talking and let them spend three to five minutes visualizing a, a winter landscape. So ask them to create a picture in their mind and think about what a winter landscape looks like and have them like ask them to construct that idea or picture in their mind. So explain that once they have an idea, they should quietly return to their seat and then make a quick sketch. So either like in a sketchbook or on a scrap paper. It's not an art piece. This is a quick sketch. So this is a, an idea from total participation. A quick sketch, like on a post-it note size. You can even pre-put post-it notes on their tables. Or you can pre-cut blue paper, like 
you don't have to use white paper like get some like that just like that photocopy blue paper and like cut it up into like like you probably cut up the page into like six pieces right like small post-it note size and then put that out and then they can return to their seat that's already out and they get to draw on blue paper their quick sketch instead of white paper just to you know encourage that excitement and then they can quick sketch their winter landscape idea so after they have their quick sketch done now they can create a winter landscape artwork inspired by the immersive experience and immersive brainstorm and like during the creative process like imagine like remember you're the technician you're the professor you're visiting and talking with your students and like ask them about their vision and what they're creating and then like encourage that or like you could bounce ideas off of them like oh like what else could there be or what else could we imagine in the landscape what about what's going on in the background what about the foreground who is in the middle ground like you can start playing with it that way and instead of telling them what to do you can kind of encourage them to add more if they're stuck or whatever or like what animals might if you're really stuck you'd be like what animals do you see or what kind of trees did we notice outside when we went on a walk that you could include whatever um that kind of thing so you can let them so you can for the artwork let them choose choice art mediums or you can pick the art mediums um or you could pick from a few art mediums that you, I'm sorry, let them pick from a few art mediums that you are willing to allow them to choose from, right? So you could either, you could pick the art medium, say, okay, you're making a winter landscape, but you're, you can choose the imagery, but you're using soft pastel. Or you could say something like, okay, you are making a winter landscape. You can choose from soft pastel, oil pastel, or felt markers for, I'm just making it up here. Or whatever okay so but the idea is to be flexible and again we're allowing choice so you can do this with any art mediums it's really depending on your comfort level you could even do pencil crayon wax crayon felt markers if you just are wanting it to be that simple it will take a few art classes because you have to do maybe a walk or a preview video and then you do your brainstorm and that immersive experience and then you do the art making and all that jazz right so it's going to take some time so that know that um and you know that your kids are going to be developing a strong sense of observational skills it's going to be highly engaging and they're going to be really engaged in that art making process so after all that immersion in the winter experience they will of course be tingling with creativity and winter ideas so really we just have to plant that seed and like watch it grow so this is the perfect idea for anybody wanting to implement more choice-based art in their classrooms and really any teacher can do this with little prep as a um little prep as a lot of the art making is just self-directed so of course for more winter art ideas you can visit my teachers pay teachers store Ms. Artastic or know that you can also if you're an art teacher join my art teacher membership the Artastic Collective in January if you are wanting a library full of completely planned art lessons with video tutorials and all that jazz so check it out if you're an art teacher the Artastic Collective membership or if you want some pre-planned videos right now you can head on over to my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic, link in the description of this video or on my podcast show notes on my blog. All right, that was idea one. It was huge. Here's idea two. Um, do you want to build a snowman? So want to increase engagement and have your students focus while the winter weather takes over? No problem. Combat those winter jitters by letting them make some snowman art. So you can do some resist painting with snowmen with white wax crayons or oil pastels and then paint the background with some cool colors using um, tempera paint cakes or watercolor paints. And of course, cool colors are colors that make us feel calm and cool. And they are blue, green, and purple. 
So if you want more choice-based play, you can provide students with a choice of cool color background paper. So construction paper is great. And then let them choose between liquid tempera paint, white soft pastel, or chalk pastel, um, or oil pastels to create their own snowman design on the paper. You can be assured that you will have a variety of snowman artworks um, when supplying a choice of these three art mediums. Your role would be to demo what each medium might look like as a sample on construction paper and show how to use each, but not show how to make the snowman on the artwork. Your su you support basically with using mediums like a studio tech. And again, kids are going to do the visualizing, they're going to do the experimenting, and they are going to do the creating. So next is winter animals in snow art projects. So another idea would be to let your students pick a choice animal that um, will be the subject of their art piece and let them create um, or draw their animal playing in the snow. So if you have primaries, this is a great time to pull out some cotton swabs and let them do some fine motor practice by letting them dip the swab into white paint and then stamp on white dots onto the artwork after drawing to create snow texture in the background. Alternatively, you can pull out those cotton balls and then let them pull them up, pull them apart and like stretch out the medium and then glue that cotton onto the bottom of the paper around the animal to create a snowy textured ground. I love this idea and it could be done in combination with the, with the cotton swab dots. It really just depends on like how much energy you have. And of course, like the age, age of the students that you're teaching, that's gonna play a huge part in determining how much energy <laughs> you're gonna be having for that. Again, if you want some pre-planned animal in snow art projects, I of course have a large selection of fully planned winter art lessons in my TPT store. So check that out there. Arctic animal art projects. So challenge your students to create an artwork of an Arctic, an Arctic animal using at least five mediums to encourage them to experiment and be creative. This can be done with any age. However, if you're doing this with primary, reduce it to three art mediums. Direct one of the mediums to be magazine clippings or scrap paper pieces, and then put up pictures or a YouTube video of Arctic animals and then let them create choice-based art by creating their own Arctic animal inspired by the picture or video, but using a variety of art making mediums and materials. They must include five or three for primary art mediums so we can ask the students to really think outside the box and move outside their comfort zone. This can be done with most ages from elementary all the way up to high school, or if you're wanting to do it, you could definitely easily do this with primary. Again, just simplify how many mediums you're expecting them to use. Uh, having them do five is just too much, unless you want to add like buttons into there. I'm sure they would enjoy that. Or cotton balls, like you could say, okay, three art mediums, plus you gotta have some buttons and cotton balls. I'm sure they would be so excited for that. Um, so yeah, all about expanding creative thinking skills. Next is winter sculptures. Oh yeah, we gotta get some sculpture ideas in here. I love sculpture. Um, so challenge students to make a miniature winter sculpture. It is Sometimes if like if we're not doing sculpture all the time, I think it's just too intimidating to ask kids to do big things, but you can definitely explore sculpture and explore the effects of gravity on art with um, smaller works, right? Like they can even be something as tall as your hand. It doesn't have to be big, right? Bring it down. So that way it's not intimidating, but they're still getting to explore sculpture. So again, you can challenge them to make miniature winter sculptures using cardboard 
and paper and any other choice art mediums. Um, I'm big. I'm very big. If you've been following me for a while on my blog and other workshops I've done online, um, you know that I am big on recycled materials. I used to work at an inner city school and there was absolutely no budget for anything. So I used to, first of all, I got creative that way. Also, I'm pretty big in my own personal life on sustainable practices. So anytime we get to do uh, reuse and recycle, definitely do it. As well, like I go to the Vancouver Art Gallery and other galleries and professional artists create a lot of artworks that speak to consumerism and consumption that create, that use, sorry, stuff from our recycling bins. So art mediums, a lot of the time are found objects. If you look at professional work, a lot of the time professional artists are using found objects. And that first reason, art mediums are expensive and there is no salary for an artist. <laughs> and when you sell your art, the gallery takes half as a commission. <laughs> so there's that. And plus it's just like the vibe of an artist really so we don't have to be like, oh, we have to get this fancy art mediums. No, 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 no. Encourage, reuse, and recycle. Plus, look at our planet. There's a lot of us humans on here. We can definitely reuse and recycle. And I don't think parents are always going to keep every single thing that their kid makes forever. So like for me, like I always try to have in or include art projects that like kids can create. They learn from the process of making it, but then they can actually just take it apart again and put it back into recycling bins. Like, but they, they, the learning has been done when we do that, right? Not every single thing has to be display worthy. And that's something that I learned at when I went to Emily Carr also. So, um, it's always kind of just stuck with me. So yeah, I, I don't know if that's just because I went, I have lived in Vancouver and British Columbia my whole life. And then I went to school and a lot of like, one of my instructors was like a Greenpeace founder. So I don't know if that is why maybe I've been influenced by some hippies. <laughs> it's a high chance, high chance. But anyway, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to promote green sustainable practices. I'm interested in it. It's important. I mean, right now I'm sitting in the effects of a climate disaster because I just went through a heat dome three months ago in a rainforest. That was on the news where our a town like burned in flames in like 15 minutes. Not, I'm not even exaggerating. Lytton, BC. Uh, and now we have three communities fully underwater and no, in, our infrastructure's gone. So... I'm sitting here in a climate disaster. And so maybe that's also why I'm really, anyways, I'm encouraging it. I'm so distracted. I'm so sorry. It's, I, I, I'm really distracted this episode because it's just a lot right now. Anyway, so this is a fun and engaging art activity. I again encourage you to use recycling mediums. It it's not coming as a color. It doesn't come as a shape, a predetermined shape, right? It encourages more creativity because the kids really have to visualize what that cardboard or recycled medium is going to become, right? This is a fun, engaging activity that asks kids or challenges them to explore and go deeper into the project to create a winter character or a winter landscape and it can really be done with anything from the recycling bin to encourage reusing, to encourage sustainability. Um, and that's important. So after the project is done, they can keep the art or again, like I've said before, return it to the recycling bin. It's all about learning from the process, not necessarily the finished product. Okay. And this is true for professional artists. So people, I don't... I, I um, have a lot of teachers with preconceived ideas that, that how I, you know, we have to create these beautiful things because there's pressure from administrators. But my argument to administrators and school districts is that 
The reality of being a professional artist, which I am, and I'm in that art community, is that just is not the reality of things. Nobody, like, we don't go by, like, most artists make their own canvases, for instance. Like, I'm making out of clay, or I use found materials, or whatever. It's just the nature of things. We don't go to, most artists don't go to Michael's and just assemble little, you know, pre-made wood things pre-cut out wood things i don't know what the, i don't know what they're called and then go to um home and then paint it and then put it in a gallery it's just it's not the reality of the situation okay well that's the end of this episode it was long but i really hope that you kind of got some ideas out of it they're all choice based they're super flexible um, pull out the recycling bin, honestly, collect recycling. If you are short on art mediums in your classroom or there is no budget, I used to sort some recycling. I'd have a cardboard bin, I'd have a fabric bin, and I'd have like fancy paper bin, which is just like colored paper or like tissue wrapping paper from like that's already been used. Not new, it's all recycled. Magazines, like pull that out and just like let kids play imagine new things out of it like we're pulling in design into here industrial design we're thinking about sustainable practices but also it's choice it gives you freedom you're not worrying about your budget as much um kids are learning from the process of making and recreating and reusing these things and then also you're pulling in those winter themes so That's my suggestion to you, and those are my winter choice art ideas for this episode. And if, I don't know why I'm saying that, and (laughs) if, wow, if you are looking for some ready-made winter art projects, you can always head on over to my Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store. Um, They all include the lesson plans, the handouts, the assessments. Um, This year, I have new product lines. New product line number one, winter artivity books. So my product line is artivity books. They're complete art activity books that are infused with the elements and principles of design. They're huge. So if you're so exhausted and you're like, I just need some worksheets because this year is crazy, That's kind of why I created this product line because we're all like, this year is crazy. (laughs) Um, And so if you just need some like worksheets to like put in between art projects or like use in addition to lessons that are also like themed for seasons and and holidays, I got those. They're called Artivity Booklets in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. And also new guys, new, 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 new. Um, I'm creating roll and draws. So it's like directed drawing, but better because you can roll a dice and then kids will have so many unlimited combinations of things to create characters with um, in four steps for the holidays and seasons. So you can check out my winter art lessons in my TPT store. You can check out my winter artivity booklets, directed draws, coloring pages, art lessons, and winter roll and draws. Essentially, I have over 700 products in there now because I've been doing this for a decade and I am so excited. Um, And I just, right now, all I can think about is trying to make your life easier given the circumstances. But if you are an art teacher, remember January. Artastic Collective membership is opening for enrollment for a limited time. Put that on your calendar. More details to come. That's all I'm saying. Just know that you are listening to this and are getting exclusive information. Okay, rambling's over. Uh, This is Ms. Artastic, Kathleen McGivern, signing out.